Hey, what up, world? This your man, Bouchon Glover. As you notice, I didn't say your boy. I'm a man. And I thought about that. I keep saying your boy. So maybe, you know, I'll get treated as a boy. But if I step my game up and say, you know, I'm it's your man, Bouchon Glover, then God hears that and he's going to give us a man blessing. Because uh, God is perfect. <laughs> you know, God is absolute. So when we say things, you know, we got to be very conscientious of them uh, moving forward. You know, just like I can't stand when people say I could do bad all by myself because that's exactly what you're about to do. You could do amazing. You could do wonderful by yourself. So the motivation today is it's September 1st, Labor Day weekend, which pretty much kicks off the fall football season coming up. So, you know, it takes nine months to have a baby. So the baby is born. It's a new day. So some things that I got to clear, that I got to um, clarify, you know, we have an agenda and we're moving forward, okay? Now, the baby boomer generation was supposed to pass the mantle, but power is addictive, so therefore they're holding that power. But they left the loophole because they created this ethnicity in this little pot of minorities in which, you know, our generation is not a part of because we're the only, I'm gonna say the only, but the last generation to really know Jesus. Any generation down before us right now, they clueless, immoral. I'm 50 years old and I still struggle with fornication. What is that? So that means I need to give me a wife and stop fornicating. So when you talk about race, you're talking about a culture and a group of people where all humanity comes from. And, and in this country, they decided to somehow extend their stay because right now, you know, the generation above us, which is the baby boomers, are still in power. And like I said, power is addicted. And some of them think that our generation is a lost generation. No, X is an unknown factor. So it's on our generation to define what X is and what it means. It's on our generation to do that. So we're doing it right now. So September 1st, it's a monumental day. Um, it's a monumental time of the year. Take nine months to have a baby. 9-1-2021. So our generation, Generation X, we have to focus specifically on the race because anything else is genocidal okay if you're a black man and you gay or queer it don't matter to us you're still a black man okay just look at us as your brother your fathers your mothers and your uncles because if blacks don't reproduce with blacks that's genocidal and there is a genocidal you know groups out there and it's political that's why when you look at the LGTQ flag, it has black and brown on it. No, y'all got to take that off. No disrespect because black is a race and there's no black in a rainbow, okay? And to make the color black, you need every color on the color chart except white because white is a canvas that we paint on. And I'm using art as a metaphor because most artists want a white canvas and they start sketching with black. So our generation, X, unknown, okay? So one of the major things that our generation is going to do, okay? If we were lost, we're found because we're not gonna sell our souls. Our souls is not for sale because we're the last generation to really know Christ. To really know Jesus that really went to church and prayed and you know get convicted when we sin so we're tapping out of it okay and we're focusing on the race because it's time for our race to thrive okay it's time for our race to thrive okay the baby boomer survived we survived and now we're here to thrive and it's not flesh and blood as far as the principalities so when I talk to people say, hey, you know, constitutionally and according to Google, we still slay. Oh, I know. Are you cool with that? 
So this is what we're doing. We're going to amend the 13th Amendment. OK, it says neither slavery nor involuntary servitude. And here's the clause, unless criminalized. And clearly we're criminalized. We're not even we're still three fifths. They still killing us. We're still murdering each other. The crime rate is still high. Mass incarceration is real. If you're in a federal prison right now, you're doing slave labor. And the crazy thing about it is in the state of California, they'll pay eighty five thousand dollars a year for a prisoner and only thirteen thousand dollars for education. Something wrong with that picture. And the only reason it's like that is because of the criminalization clause that must be removed. And then since we living in California and these states and you bringing in all the immigrants, Spanish for a second language from starting at kindergarten. OK, because in the L.A. Unified School Districts or in the uh, urban school districts, if your reading and comprehension is not up to par by the third grade, that's the forecasting for the prison system in the future. So we're going to break the cycle. So in years to come, when they start doing these litmus tests and start seeing that our third graders are performing at a very high rate, our third graders are bilingual, then we can stop that chain. But the criminalization clause, that's what we gotta do as a people. It must be amended because it's not, <sighs> come on man. So, and what I'm saying is, I wanna say this, and just be totally honest. When I say it's not flesh and blood, it's part of the principalities. Meaning if you're wrestling with the flesh, you will never achieve and you will never get to the level in life where you really want to be. Because the flesh is, you know, a part of the crab bucket syndrome. You know, the flesh is, you know, the ones that could actually keep you from your blessings. So when I say it's part of the principalities, meaning we have to go at you know, the powers and principles, powers and principles. Okay, because from a principality perspective, how are you gonna have a criminalization clause in the 13th Amendment and then just go ahead and round up newly free slaves in the South and put them in a chain game for 100% free labor? That's not cool. But there's so much going on in the world today. You know, all these things are distractions, you know, but just like Dr. King would always say, they expect us to pull ourselves up for, by our own bootstraps. We got boots and we got straps. So it's time to really push an agenda so we can all be on one sheet of music. And what I'm saying is, the women's organizations, the women's movements, the feminist groups have been championed by Democrats, which is okay. The LBG, the LGTQ community was championed by Obama. So now the civil rights movement, you know, in which Generation X was closely attached to, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically because of our age, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the mantle from second base, we're gonna get the third and we're gonna go home. Because once we do this, then we can really thrive as a community as a nation within a nation. So we all know, you know, what we say and what we do, all oh, blacks ain't gonna never do nothing. nothing. We've been talking and saying what we ain't gonna do for how long? Years. So now let's change the narrative and talk about what we can do. Cause no one's stopping us from doing anything but ourselves. So you really have to dig deep within your spirit and understand that if we don't do this, we all going to hell. And when I say black, it's a race, okay? Race, we must close the chapter on race in America because in America, African-American is an ethnicity, just like gay, just like lesbian, just like queer, transgender, immigrants. So what I'm saying is, if we want to thrive, we have to get out of that minority car and drive the race car, okay? Because our race is our grace, okay? And grace comes from God. It's no secret that you put a G in front of race, it means grace, okay? And grace comes from the most high. And I'm gonna say this in closing, God ain't good. <laughs> God ain't good. 
And the reason I'm saying that, because I want you to really think. Just like if I see somebody right now, what's up dog? You good? Yeah, I'm good, you good? Yeah. And just imagine if you was a recruiter and the recruiting coordinator say, hey man, the players that you're recruiting, you know, who's this guy right here? This your best one? Uh, good morning. Uh, he good. That mean he not the best one. God is best. God is excellent. God is benevolent. God is pure. Come on now. There's so many words that that's better than good. You know, I know God is good, but all these years we've been just getting a good blessing just to get by. But we want an excellent blessing. We want a pure blessing. Come on. A pure blessing, an excellent blessing. We want the best blessing. And that best blessing is going to come from the most high. In the name of Jesus, we can and we will. So stay tuned. I'm about to destroy y'all timeline from here until next time. This your man, Bouchon. Peace out.